Okay, so let's hop into homework number one. So there's 10 questions. Again, all the questions are from 1.3 on uh, linear equations. Oh, so I remember, that's what I wanted to say. So these questions should be similar to yours, but again, numbers are gonna change for each student, so they won't be exactly the same. So the methodology to complete the questions will be um, what we're focusing on here. But probably if you look for number one, you're not finding the slope of the line through one, eight, five, ten. Your, your coordinates are probably slightly different. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. So on number one, Uh, so we just want to find the slope between uh, 1, 8 and 5, 10. So remember, our slope formula is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So uh, just identify your coordinates. I'm always going to call the second pair y x x2 y2, but you know you can do it in either order so long as you're consistent. So I do 10 minus 8 over 5 minus 1, and I'm getting two fourths, which is the same as one half. And you can submit the answer, and we got it correct. Okay, number two, find the equation of the line that satisfies slope seven, y-intercept negative five. Very easy, we just need to remember the slope-intercept form. So that is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is the y-intercept. <coughs> so find the line. with slope equal to seven and y-intercept equal to minus five. So very straightforward here. We just get y equals seven x minus five. And that is all we have to do. Okay, uh, number three is identical, so we're not going to do that one. Tells you the slope and y-intercept. We will skip on down to four, where they give us two points and we have to find the equation. Uh, again, we went over this on Wednesday. I showed two methods, uh, slope, intercept, and also just plugging into, uh, no, point slope, and then also plugging into slope, intercept. Everyone said they were more familiar with the second method, so that's the one I'll show here. So... Skipping on to number four. Um, so find the line passing through two, two, and one, six. So first find the slope six minus two over one minus two. So we have a slope of 4 over minus 1, which is just negative 4. And then what do we know? We know that the equation of our line has to look something like y equals minus 4x plus a y-intercept value of b. Plug in either point for x and y. So I'm going to use 2, 2. 2 equals negative 4 times 2 plus b, so we have 2 is equal to minus 8 plus b. Add 8 to both sides, and we see that our b value is 10. So our equation of the line is y equals minus 4x plus 10, and that is it. So, are there any questions so far from anyone? Let me uh, check the chat. Oh, nope, doesn't look like anyone has any questions yet. So, we'll just continue 
moving forward. Number five, another similar question. So find the equation. of the line through two points, minus one, minus two, and four, three. Same exact process. Start with the slope. Anytime you have negatives, just be careful that you're actually plugging them in and using parentheses. So we're going to have three minus negative two. So that's going to translate to three plus two on top. And on bottom, we have 4 minus negative 1. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus 1 is 5. Our slope here is just 1. So we know our equation actually looks like y equals x plus b. And again, just plug in either points. I'll use 4, 3 so we don't have to mess around with negatives. So 3 for y, 4 for x. We are just subtracting 4 with my numbers. So we have negative 1 as the value of b. So here we have y equals x minus 1. Okay, sketch a line through the point negative 2, 4 with slope minus 1 third. Uh, we went over that in class as well. Again, remember it's Usually good to just locate the point, and then from there, we can use the slope as a set of instructions to move from one point on the graph to another point. So uh, sketch the line through minus 2, 4 with slope minus 1 third. Um, so let's find minus two, four. So minus two, four would be right here. And then the slope is a set of instructions, right? Negative one on top tells me to move down one. Three on the bottom tells me to move right three, right? It's rise, change in Y value over run, change in X value. So I would go down one and write three, and I would find myself right here. So my line should look like this. So we're gonna be looking for a similar picture. Again, negative slope means it must be downward, so we could rule out the first two pictures immediately. Ours looks most similar to this one. Okay. Um, for seven, they want us to find the slope and the y-intercept and then to draw the graph. Finding slope-intercept form is very easy. It just means solve for y. So let's go through that. So we want to write in slope intercept form. So we have 3x plus 2y equals 18. So to solve for y, first get 2y by itself. So we subtract 3x on both sides. So we have 2y is minus 3x plus 18. Then we just need to divide by 2 to solve for y. So the left-hand side is y. On the right-hand side, we don't want to leave it like a big rational expression. Remember, with fractions, one of the nice things you can do is you can split them apart using that common denominator. So I can divide the minus 3x by 2 and then also divide the 18 by 2 to write them as two terms. So I'm just going to leave this as minus 3 over 2 times the x plus 18 over 2, which simplifies to 9. So immediately I can see that my slope is minus 3 over 2 and my y-intercept is 9. And that means the picture would look something like uh, 
we have our y-intercept of 9, and we want to move down 3 and write 2. So down 1, 2, 3, right 2, we get this point, and this is the graph. So I think this first one looks pretty good. Anything moving upward is going to be wrong, and B looks too flat. So looks good to me, and we're all set. Okay, three more to look at. Um, eight is very similar, so I'm just going to leave that one to you. It should be exactly the same as seven. Add six X to both sides, then divide by five. You should be all set. Okay, so let's look at um, number nine and number 10. So number nine, we've got this uh, function. It says, suppose the taxes a company pays is this function T of P, which is 0.24P plus 15.6 thousand dollars, where P is the uh, annual profit in thousands of dollars. So we've got taxes in thousands of dollars and profit in thousands of dollars. So that would mean our slope is the taxes we're paying per dollar's revenue. So what is the rate of change? Well, the rate of change is this 0.24. Right? And what does it measure? Remember the Slope has units of Y over units of X or units of output over units of input. Units of output are taxes in thousands of dollars. Units of input are profit in thousands of dollars. So it measures the amount of tax they pay for all the company's annual profit, right? Um, so the ones, the ones that you should be narrowed down to are the first choice, the tax they pay for each hundreds of dollars of profit, the tax they pay for each thousands of dollars of profit, and the tax they pay for all the company's profit. Well, the thing is, the taxes are in thousands of dollars, and the company's profit is in thousands of dollars. So that will cancel out. This is telling me essentially thousands of dollars over thousands of dollars just come out to dollar per dollar. So this is telling me I'm paying 24 cents in taxes for every one dollar of profit so that's why i'm choosing the last one tax they pay for all the company's profit because they're both being measured in the same number of dollars you don't have one being measured of hundreds of dollars and the other one being measured in thousands of dollars or anything like that okay number 10 the relationship between uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius is given by so-and-so. This formula, sketch the graph, what's the slope? All right, we'll go through this in a second. Um, I just want to say one thing about why you should never have to memorize this formula, at least if you still remember some things from science in grade school or high school. Um, that's all you need to remember is that Fahrenheit and Celsius share a linear relationship, right? So let's let's just talk about that for a second. Fahrenheit and Celsius share a linear relationship. We could say, what is the formula? I always like this as a math question because it's a math question with no numbers, but the answer should be very precise in terms of numbers. Well, the thing is, the, if you know a relationship is linear, you only need to know two ordered pairs to establish exactly what that relationship is. And from science, you should know two pairs of numbers that are on the Fahrenheit and Celsius scale. What am I talking about? Well, everyone should know the... Uh, freezing point and the boiling point. If you can remember those, then you can always figure out the formula, even if you don't have the formula memorized. The freezing point is zero for Celsius, 32 for Fahrenheit, and the boiling point is 100 for Celsius, um, 212 for Fahrenheit. So again, our, our ordered pairs are written as CF. 
So F is like the Y value and C is like the X value. So let's use the, um, the, the slope intercept formula to figure out what this should be. Well, I know my slope should be 212 minus 32 divided by 100 minus zero. So that's 180 over 100, which in lowest terms is nine over five. Just divide the top and bottom both by 20. So now my formula should look like C equals nine over five F. Oh no, I got it backwards. F is the, uh, F is the Y value, what am, I, what am I thinking? F equals nine over five C plus the Y intercept. Well, the freezing point is the Y intercept because it has an X coordinate of zero. So F equals nine fifth C plus 32. That is our formula to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And that's all you had to remember was the freezing point and boiling point. So I think kind of nice to remember that. So notice nine fifth C plus 32, we derived it. Um, okay, so we know it should be going up and it should have a Y intercept of 32. That rules out B and D, or excuse me, B and C. They always have negative slopes. A, it looks like it's going, or D, it looks like it's going through zero, zero. So we know the graph has to be A. What is the slope of the graph? Well, that's the nine over five. What does it represent? F is your output, degrees Fahrenheit, C is your input. So it should increase nine degrees Fahrenheit for every five degrees Celsius or nine over five degrees Fahrenheit for a one degree increase in Celsius. We could have done it like they did in D. It represents that F increases nine degrees, but it would be for every five degree increase of Celsius. What is the F intercept? 32, that's the freezing point. Yeah. Fahrenheit temperature corresponding to a Celsius temperature of zero. And that is it. Hopefully we got those correct. Sure did. Okay, 1.3, just one section this week. Fairly easy homework, um, but that's okay. We need to get the ball rolling somewhere. So are there any questions for me? Do I need to go over any of the examples? Please just let me know. Otherwise, we will finish up here. So I'll leave a couple minutes for questions. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.